Do I even need to mention how important it is to keep our data secure in today's world? Probably not. And as database administrators, it's our primary objective to keep that data secure at all levels, sensitive columns, backups, and even the database itself. In this concept nugget, we're going to drill into the architecture of SQL Server encryption and talk about all the technologies that we can use to encrypt data at all levels. The first thing to know about SQL Server encryption is there are many paths we can take to encrypt our data. To understand how this works, it helps to look at the big picture to understand all the players involved. SQL Server uses a hierarchical encryption architecture where using a combination of certificates, asymmetric keys, and symmetric keys, each layer encrypts the layer beneath it. At the root of it all, we have what's known as the SMK, the Service Master Key, and that is one sad looking key. But the Service Master Key is automatically generated the first time your SQL Server instances is started. This SMK is used to encrypt and protect, along with a password, the DMK, which is the Database Master Key. Database Master Keys can be used to protect certificates, which are digitally signed public keys, and we can create self-signed certificates directly in SQL Server or have one issued and signed by a CA, a Certificate Authority. DMKs can also encrypt asymmetric keys. Now, asymmetric keys are public-private key pairs that can be used to decrypt data encrypted by the other. Now, encryption and decryption via certificate, and even more so with asymmetric keys, are resource intensive. So there's a trade-off here. You will get more security, but less performance using these methods. At the heart of it all, we have symmetric key encryption. Now, symmetric keys use a single key for both encrypting and decrypting. And because of that, it's incredibly fast, but of course, less secure. So we can make it more secure by encrypting our symmetric key that we used to encrypt data with, with another symmetric key or a certificate or an asymmetric key. We can also store our symmetric and asymmetric keys outside of SQL Server through the extensible key management module. This will allow us to place those keys on a hardware device, like a smart card or USB drive, to further protect those keys from folks who have godlike access to our SQL Server instances. Now, these solid arrows represent the most common paths used to encrypt data in SQL Server. The dotted lines are rarely used. I'm gonna give you both extremes here and everything else sort of falls in the middle and depends on your environment and your security requirements. On one end, we have the extremely secure environment where security is far more important than performance. In that world, you will protect your data with a symmetric key, protect that symmetric key with an asymmetric key, which is protected by the database master key, which is protected by the password, which is of course protected by the service master key. That's one extreme. The other extreme is where performance is more important than security. And here you'll use one of these two paths here, either just a symmetric key protected by a password used to encrypt data, or your symmetric key used to encrypt data protected by another symmetric key, which is protected by a password. So that's SQL Server's hierarchical encryption architecture. And we'll be working with many of these objects and heading through many of these paths as we learn how to encrypt the various objects in SQL Server. And speaking of that, what can we encrypt in SQL Server? Let's start at the bottom with column-based data. Yeah, we can encrypt our columns and we have two methods of doing so. We have cell level encryption, which has been around for a while since SQL Server 2005, and this will only encrypt data at rest. So this is now turning into our legacy option for encrypting our columns. Our second method is known as always encrypted, and this is a brand new feature here in SQL Server 2016 that will not only encrypt data at rest, but also data in motion. And the encryption actually occurs in the client application. So your data is protected all the way through and even from database administrators. We can also encrypt our backups. SQL Server has native support for doing so, and this is something that you will absolutely want to do. Because if somebody were to get their hands on one of your backups, well, they could restore it to any old SQL Server and have a jolly good time with that data. If our backup was encrypted, however, that backup would be useless without the encryption keys. Finally, we can encrypt the database itself using a feature known as TDE, Transparent Data Encryption, which was introduced back in SQL Server 2008. This will allow us to encrypt everything underneath the database, our data files as well as the log files. We have a nugget dedicated to each one of these methods in this module. We'll dig into the specifics and see them in action. In this CBT Nugget, we covered the many layers that make up SQL Server's encryption architecture and also saw where and how it's used. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.